right, hi again. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me. I'm Frederica Whitfield. We begin this hour in Texas, where temperatures and tempers are rising. Snow and ice is melting, but the new crisis, no water. And if there is water, it must be boiled with nearly half the state under a boil water advisory. After frigid temperatures crippled the power grid all morning, we have seen thousands of people waiting in long lines trying to get their hands on bottled water. Several Democratic Congresswomen are surveying the damage left by that winter storm, which knocked out power to millions of Texans. When disaster strikes, this is not just an issue for Texans, this is an issue for our entire country. And our whole country needs to come and rally together behind the needs of Texans all across the state. The storms have also created a backlog of coronavirus vaccines. The White House saying six million doses have been unable to be distributed because of the weather. All right, let's focus on the critical situation happening in Texas. CNN's Omar Jimenez uh, takes a look at how people are doing, how they're handling what has been a brutal week. So you'd never even used your fireplace before this? Oh, no. Jen Studebaker and her family in Austin, Texas, were burning chairs, pieces of bookshelves, before eventually scavenging for bits of wood without even a means to cut it. The hammer actually is what we were splitting wood with. Using their nearly abandoned fireplace now as a means of survival. We would bring uh, the head of a futon bed and put it right here so... Uh, we could get closer to the heat. Get closer to the heat and I would sleep right here. So we would all just kind of be huddling together. Restless from the new mentality they've now had to adopt. Everyone's just, you know, thinking like, if we just make it one more day, just get one more day. And then it's like, well, what if it happens again tomorrow? Now we got to... Okay, we can't burn all of this. And even though the power's on... The water's not even bubbling, nothing. The water isn't, and it's not just Austin, as they're among the millions across Texas under a boil water advisory. In Houston, miles of long lines to pick up water at mass distribution sites. In San Antonio, this apartment complex burned to the ground as firefighters struggled to get enough water to fight it. Our main concern is water supply. All these hydrants out here are dry. There's, well, they're not dry, they're just frozen, and there's no water. Even members of Congress forced to get creative. I'm going to fill my toilet with water so that I can be ready for later today. Without water in her Houston home, Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia collected rainwater to flush her toilet. And hospitals are struggling to care for an influx of patients amid an ongoing pandemic. As more of our area hospitals uh, were without power and water, uh, many of their patients ended up at our facilities. Earlier today, we had a situation where an elderly female walked out of her home and she was found in her backyard, uh, deceased, and uh, that was directly related to the weather conditions. Emergencies merging and leaving those already affected by the pandemic wondering where to go next. I lost half my income and then finally we're getting here. What am I going to do? I mean, we can barely live here. Um, sorry. It's like you just keep going and going and just this whole year just keep, just keep going. And if we just make it one more month, then my tax return will come in or we'll get some funding. I can't pay my utility bill, so just let us have the tiny apartment. That's all I'm asking. And maybe some water. <laughs> be nice. Wow, yeah, this struggle is just seemingly unstoppable. Um, Omar joining us live now. That's a tremendous uh, perspective from that family. Thanks for bringing uh, them to us. So now uh, tell us where you are and uh, who are you talking to there? Well, Fred, we're at a brewery in the Austin area where the real effort right now is just trying to get water because that is the next frontier of the crisis. So we're with a family here who has come to do just that, where they're filling up water here at Meanwhile Brewery. So, Anthony, what is what has this week been like? And tell me about the decision to come out and, and in some cases, forage for water. Uh, it's to get water. We've been without hot water since uh, Monday, so it's been a little tough. And... Uh, Yesterday we lost water, so like a lot, of, a lot of other people in the city, we don't have any water and we're just trying to look for water. So we're here at Meanwhile, and so it's great to see the community come together and pitch in and do stuff like this. But uh, yeah, we're scrambling. Yeah. 
Yeah, I believe it. And you, I mean, you got the whole unit here. Stella, I want to come down to your level here. You're seven years old. All right. Have you ever gone through anything like this before? No. What has this week been like for you? Hard. Why has it been hard? Because we've been out, we've been out with power, but we got it back. And yes. Yeah, it's been a weird, weird week. I like your mask, though. It's a nice koala mask. And uh, say, what about for you? You're coming into filling up water here. What's it been like this week for you, just being a part of the unit here? It's been hard because we lost power, and it's been long, and we, um, we're trying to get it back. Has it been weird? I mean, you guys are filling up water just to, you know, to stay clean and, and use bottled water instead of the tap. Has that been a weird experience? What's it been like? It's been weird. Yeah. And then for you, <laughs> Meredith, how's <laughs> very descriptive. But but over the course, I mean, for you for you all as a unit, I mean, did you ever think that that this would be what, what you all were coming to in a place like Austin, where you're literally having to use uh, bottled water? No. And no. what are you looking forward to most about getting water back? Um, well. The, there was a panic mode last night that we didn't have enough drinking water. So that was first and foremost, drinking water for, for the family. We would love showers, but we will we'll get that when we, when we get our water turned back on. But mainly it was just to have enough drinking water. Our dishes can wait, laundry can wait, but just having enough to, to, uh, to feel comfortable with. Yeah. And the last thing I want to ask quickly is if, if I was Governor Greg Abbott standing right here, what would you say to me about what you need and, and about what you should have moving forward? Uh, we need to look at ERCOT. Uh, there needs to be accountability for this. This was entirely too long. We understand that this can happen uh, with storms. We're not prepared for this at all in Austin. But for this sort of destruction that happened um, and people, so many people who have been without water for as long as they have, someone needs to be held, held accountable. For sure. Well, we wish you all the best. I understand you're doing what you got to do. Like so many people across Texas, the numbers more than 15 million across the state have had their water disrupted in some way. And this is what you got to do, Fred. Yeah, it's a huge number. I love hearing from the kids, though. I mean, they are they are part of the problem solving <laughs> for the family right now. And they're really they, they were delightfully expressive. Um, good luck to the family there. Omar Jimenez, thank you so much. The weather disaster in Texas has not only brought hardship to the Lone Star State, it has also brought out the best as neighbors have reached out to help neighbors and strangers have come to the rescue of strangers. And that was apparent from the moment the storm hit earlier this week. And drivers stranded on the icy roads were rescued by Good Samaritans. Joining me right now is one of those roadside heroes, Andrew Bost. Uh, he's an Austin resident who volunteered to drive around and rescue stranded drivers uh, during the storm. Andrew, so good to see you. Thank you, Frederica. So tell me how these instinct instincts kicked in. What did you see? What did you know about? And what did you do? Well, I have to be honest, the first instinct was fun. I got out in my four-wheel drive truck as soon as the, the snow hit just to see what was going on and how the truck would do and mm -hmm. found somebody who needed to uh, be pulled out, so did that. And then I thought, well, there must be more opportunities out there. So looked online for four-wheel drive opportunities in Austin for volunteering and uh, then saw an article about somebody else who was doing it and got hooked up with him. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. So, um, was there, so obviously there was no hesitation on your part. You were like, okay, my ride works and now let's put it to good use and help out people. Uh, who were you encountering and, and what kind of need do you believe you addressed? Well, there were all kinds of needs. I uh, pulled some people out of ditches. I delivered some meals. I delivered some boiled water. I uh, gave a ride to a nurse, to a hospital. I cut some trees out of roads, just whatever I could find that needed to be done. Wow, so what was the reaction when you would arrive and when you you know, kicked into high gear, so to speak? What was the reaction from people? Great reactions. There was a lot of gratitude. Uh, it was it was clear that uh, there just were a lot of people with with varying needs. And in Texas, we don't often need four wheel drive, but this was that rare opportunity when it was absolutely necessary. And uh, so it was good to be able to to help people when I had the tool to do it. And what about for yourself? I mean, you had the wheels, you had the tool, you know, to help out others. But how did this? 
you know, cold snap, this, this you know, blanket of, of ice and snow, how did it impair you? Did, did you have water at home, food, all that? Yeah, so the first night of the crisis, uh, we had we had water and electricity. We wound up uh, hosting some elderly neighbors of ours who didn't have electricity. The next night, we had lost power, so those neighbors went back home to their coal department, and we went and stayed with some friends. The next night, they had lost electricity, so we went and stayed with some other friends. And so we've just kind of been electricity nomads for uh, yeah. for most of this week. Wow, seemingly unending, uh, but um, thankfully your graciousness was unending too, helping out so many people who I know are really grateful for that. And, you know, it all goes full circle, right? I hope it does. <laughs> all right, Andrew uh, Bost, thank you so much. All the best to you. Thank you, Frederica.